the action camera market has been kind of stale for a while. I think the last one I had was a GoPro Hero 6. And I mean, it was okay, but they all kind of do the same and none of them really stand out all that much. And then this guy comes around. It looks kind of similar. It's got a lens on the front. It's got a screen on the back. But can your GoPro do this and this? No, no, it can't. This is the Insta360 ONE R and the whole camera revolves around this modular system that gives you a whole bunch of options. This particular version is the twin edition and it comes with two different lens systems. The first is your standard GoPro like wide angle at 16 mil that shoots in 4K, but the second is a 5.7K 360 degree dual lens setup. And after viewing all the test footage that I went out and recorded, I gotta say I am all aboard the 360 degree video hype train. Maybe not for the reasons you might be thinking about at first, but I'll get to that in just a bit. The camera is made up of three different parts. You've got the core where the brain of the camera is as well as the touch screen. You've got the lens and then there's the battery pack underneath. Now it might not look like it, but once all the pieces are snapped together like this, the camera is IPX8 waterproof up to five meters. It would make me a little bit nervous to go out in the water like this because of how easily the pieces snap together and then release. But that issue is solved when you put it into its case frame thing, which is the only way to mount the camera to anything. So it'll pretty much live in its case anyway. The touch screen on this camera is really small. We're talking like a one and a little bit inch screen size here. And to be honest, I have a hard time navigating through the menu system with my fat fingers, but at least it's an intuitive system. The redeeming quality of this screen is that you can actually flip it around the other way when you're using the wide angle lens, which makes it a pretty decent vlog setup. Now, the part most of you guys have been waiting for, Video samples! First up is the 360 degree video. When I first sat down and viewed some footage on my phone, it blew my mind a little bit. The colors were great, the camera was doing a great job of exposing the image, everything was nice and sharp, and overall, I was super impressed. Then I put it onto the 27 inch 5K IMAX screen and it started to fall apart a little. The problem here is though it's a 5.7K image and that's a huge resolution, it's shared by a 360 degree field of view, meaning when you punch into a more normal field of view, the footage looks a lot closer to 1080p than say 5K. It's definitely still a usable image and like I said before, this camera has thrown me onto the 360 degree hype train. Here's why. Let's say I'm doing a road trip vlog and I have this camera strapped down to my dash or my windshield. I'm just watching the road and talking when all of a sudden I see an electric Nissan Leaf drive by. Because I captured everything in a 360 degree field of view, I can point the normal field of view at the Leaf as it passes by, something I would have missed had I only had a single camera pointed at myself. And that presents a whole other world of filmmaking opportunities for vloggers. Being able to choose what I want to show my audience after the fact is a really powerful thing to have access to. I recorded a bunch of footage on a couple of different days while I was out for a walk with Jen, and overall the camera did a decent job. I like the colors the 1R puts out, and the stitch lines are pretty much invisible as long as there are no objects close to the side of the lenses. The camera also features something called flow state stabilization. All of this footage is shot handheld and trust me, I did not try to hold this camera steady. Watch what happens when I turn off flow state stabilization. Yeah. Yikes. It's not perfect though. If you pay attention to the trees in the background, you can see some weird micro jittering going on, but overall flow state is doing its job, even when I'm running like a moron. The audio is pretty decent overall too. Here's a clip of me talking to the camera in my car. All right, so it's an absolutely gorgeous morning. So I figured I'd take the good old Insta360 ONE R out for a spin in the car to see what the flow state stabilization looks like once it's mounted to my window with a GoPro suction mount. Hopefully it's pretty good and uh, hopefully the audio sounds pretty good. So this is just a test. The 4K wide lens is also pretty decent, and although it isn't as wide as I would like, it's definitely a noticeable improvement in sharpness over the 360 degree lenses. Again, this is due to the fact that the 4K lens has a lot smaller of a field of view to pack those pixels into than the 360 degree lens system. It can also shoot up to 60 FPS in 4K, so you can get some really cool slow motion 4K shots. One other negative is that this version of the camera doesn't do all that well in low light. The one inch version should do a little better, but I don't have access to that at the moment, so that 
remains to be seen. Once the shutter speed starts to drop to let in more light, the flow state stabilization tends to fall apart and the image kind of becomes a little grainy. I'd recommend setting the camera into manual mode when you can and keeping the ISO below 200 for the cleanest image, especially with the 360 degree attachment. Insta360 have done a lot of work on the software side of things though. The 1R app is complete with a full editing suite. <laughs> a little bit of a rhyme there. And the editing suite has a whole whack of features, including this AI editing tool that uses an algorithm to edit the video for you based on what it thinks you want to see in your final video. I find the workflow to be a little strange because the video files are a proprietary INSV file. So if, if I want to work with the videos on Final Cut, I have to import the files into the Insta360 desktop app, animate the angles to whatever I want, and then export it as an MP4 file after. Not a big deal, just something to keep in mind. All in all, I think the 1R is a cool little camera. I wouldn't call it a GoPro killer, as people say, but I would say that I do really like the direction that Insta360 is going with their cameras. And if they can pump a lot more resolution into their 360 videos to make it even sharper, I'm 100% on board with what they're doing. Unfortunately, the twin edition is not cheap, coming in at almost 500 bucks. But if you think of it as buying a 360 cam and a regular action cam, the price is a bit of an easier pill to swallow. If you're looking for a camera that can do both 360 videos and regular wide angle videos, well, there's not really that much else on the market, so I guess the 1R is a solid choice. If you like this video, please give it a like and subscribe to support my channel, and as always, have a great day.